repeating the cries of the children. The ancient ones give warning. Sharon Raji Maynard here this morning. And we are on number seven. Chapter 11, New Awakens Old. Pam woke suddenly from a restless sleep. She felt clammy. A knot of terror gripped her throat, shortening her breath. She deliberately shifted her breathing, inhaling deeply, exhaling slowly to force the tightness in her lungs to loosen. She looked around her into the dark of the night and psychically called her shadow. Shadow, please request the angels on our team to do whatever is necessary to tag and transform the cause of this feeling, she asked trembling. She made the request several times before she felt safe enough for her body to relax. Pam lay back onto her pillow, closed her eyes, and searched for the source of this terror. She reviewed her activities of the past week. They were all very positive. Her clients had made amazing breakthroughs. The children's project was bringing a great deal of satisfaction. And there, then there was the beautiful weekend with Bob. Suddenly, she knew the problem. It was because of her weekend with Bob. She thought about spending her life with him, and the terror came back. Acknowledging its presence, she rode the fear like a wild horse. Pam felt it rush and pause, lift and settle, knowing that this emotion had a message to give her. Then she became an observer, detached and alert. Who within me can tell me about this terror? She asked of herself, and then Pam waited. The impact of the, that the energy made it difficult for her to stay focused, and so she got out of bed to get her paper and pencil. Climbing back into bed, she again asked, who knows about this terror? Slowly, her mind steeled, and a voice whispered, I do, I do, but me must be very quiet. Pam wrote down the words. What name can I call you? Pam began as, she, as if she were talking to a child or a client. You may call me what you will. My, my name does not matter. What does matter is that you must know that you are in grave danger. If you continue, you will bring great harm to others. These were the words that came to her mind and Pam wrote them into her notebook. Startled, Pam responded, I don't understand. If you come together with the one you call Bob, they will see your great light and destroy both of you. Writing the words, breathing deeply, Pam focused on keeping the terror from overwhelming her. Who are you, she asked. Those who, who, who will see, she asked. Those who do not want there to be light. Those who have been trapped and are destroying our city, came the reply. And so you bring this terror to warn me? Pam asked. Yes, warning you is the job you have given me. It is necessary that you stay small, be still, keep yourself invisible. He must do the same. It is not safe to be seen. It's even more dangerous to be together, the voice concluded. Pam listened and wrote. Then she asked questions of this one she named Terror, who carried these warnings. She stayed present until Terror had no more to say. Thank you for the warning, Pam saw, spoke solemnly. Thank you, Tara. I am going to leave you in the hands of those who love you. I will come back when I know more. Then she called on her guide, Shadow. <clears throat> Shadow, I would like to go back to the time when I created this warning voice. I want to go to the situation, the specific experience, 
in order to review and evaluate that decision. I want to see new possibilities and make a permanent change. Pam <clears throat> relaxed and let herself shift her mind and her awareness and move to another time and place. Taking several long breaths, she traveled back along her time, her timeline. She knew when she was at the right place. Pam saw herself. It was a previous lifetime. She was in a female body. She was helping to launch a large sailing boat, a seaworthy craft with sails to catch the slightest wind as they journeyed. It rode high in the water as individuals rode out to bring supplies on board. Groups of people stood close, small families, individuals who were trusted friends, and others who were invited because of their expertise and committed to wholeness, the wholeness that would bring good and benefit. Pam realized they looked up to her as their leader, although everyone was there and was deeply valued. Each person contributed something of worth to the community, like pieces of, of a puzzle. They formed a whole. They were gathered in the dark of night, fleeing their city. It was important that no one else knew they were living. They had to be absolutely silent. Pam felt their anxiety, commitment, and deep, deep sadness. She knew there were children already in the boat. She knew two of them were hers. Pam asked Shadow to open the view for her and for the husband of that lifetime. The pain she felt at this request flowed from deep within her soul. It was an ache in every marrow of her bone. Pam felt a cry of sorrow rise in her throat, although she didn't yet know why. She saw the young woman she had been in that lifetime contain her anguish with all of the strength of will she had as she embraced her husband a final time. Her pain at leaving without him would crush her and any cries for his loss had to be kept inside. She knew her silence would keep them all alive and so she remained utterly mute. Pam watched the group push the smaller boats loaded with those who were leaving out into the water. They moved silently to a larger vessel waiting to take them away. She knew that this young woman was more than a leader. She carried within herself all of the knowledge, the plans, the grid work for a new civilization. How could that be? Instantly, her question was answered. Shadow replied, you and your husband had been active in many groups who tried to change the course of destruction of this city. He was brilliant, as were you. Your voices had been discounted by those in power, those who controlled for personal benefit. Now the entire population was at risk. You both knew of certain corrections that could still turn the tide. He had decided to stay in the hopes that those who ruled Atlantis would finally listen. The chances were slim, but so many lives were at stake. So many were in danger if the city were destroyed. He knew in his heart that he had to try. Many groups came together to consider what would be necessary to survive. They considered and prepared for various options. If the corrections were not made by the city leaders, one small group was selected to leave the city in secret for a secure land and begin again. You were chosen to lead this group to safety, including all the children, while your husband stayed behind. Pam had never felt such devastating pain nor witnessed such courage. 
She remained with the unfolding story until till she could stand no more. Shadow, what did I miss back then? What is terror showing me? You did not miss anything. You did that lifetime perfectly. While you were impeccable and strong, you also anchored deeply in yourself a vow of silence, a commitment to loss, and the life of a hermit. These vows became your foundation for all future lifetimes. In that time, to recognize that you no longer posed a, de a threat to those you love by your presence, you recognized many changes were made, galactic secrets were being destroyed. You no longer need to take up on the role of a leader moving others through treacherous times. The one you call terror is a part of yourself that was assigned to the job of silence and suffering life alone. Now it is time to relieve her of that role and give her a new responsibility appropriate for this lifetime. Pa Pam breathed herself in, back into the present moment. After she had settled in, she then opened herself to the energy presence of terror. Thank you for being so strong and courageous for me and the others. You kept me safe, and I appreciate your diligence, Pam spoke to Tara. However, that part of our life is over. I release you from the job of silence and from living as a hermit. Could you please take all that you took on in order to live out that role? You can release the script, the costumes, the emotions, the intensity. I'm going to give that energy bundle over to our angels and they can transform it back to love and light. Pam watched as the energy of lifetime in which she fled Atlantis was lifted, bundled and restored to light. She then asked Terror, what job would you like to have in my lifetime as it is now? with our safety in being all that we can be. She saw terror, terror soften and smile. First, I want the name of Gabriella, and I want you to help me, help you work with the babies. So be it, laughed Pam. She mentally watched Terror's energy shift from dense, murky brown into the lightest of blue and green as she took on her new identity as Gabriella. Pam breathed this part of herself into her heart area. Another piece of her soul was now integrated. <laughs>